Thank you very much for the great presentation. There we go. Now you can listen. Good. So it's an honor for me to have to be at this space and to have so many people at this time. It's really weird. Um really awake because I'm really excited about being here and a little bit nervous to be honest in two minutes is done so i'm gonna share my screen one second there we go this is from the beginning there we go so i hope everybody can hear me so uh, besides the aims that, that Don mentioned, um, my aim when I talk about social theater and social work is that you keep on looking for information and that in the future you can approach theater in your daily practice, research or education. So this is the um, this first scream. It was about it's a theater performed by women who were victims of gender violence, and they created a play. So social theater and social work is a very old innovation. I mean, it's not innovation at all. But in the academic, um, in, in in the academic uh, uh, articles, it appears as something new, and it's also seen as new in education and in training. It's seen as an innovation, and I'm not gonna give a perfect historical background of theater and social theater and social work, but I will give you a few highlights. So. The first picture is a Greek theater because in Greece is where theater started, modern theater, the theater we know now. And it was about social problems. And in the all the plays about social dilemmas and all the mythology is about social problems. And it was a manner people have to deal with social issues. So now we're gonna go many, many years to the beginning of social work. And the second picture is a theater in a settlement house by Jane Adams. Jane Adams was one, is recognized as one of the pioneers in social work and she fought for peace and she had this horizon of social justice and she used theater and art as a manner of integration. And it was not social theater as we can think today, but for example, uh, improvisation theater started there. Uh, and systematization of social theater in many spheres started there. So then the next picture is about psychodrama and is Moreno, it's more about psychology but this was really influential in the future. And here comes the fourth picture, and uh, the two books that were about Augusto Boal, Theater of the Play of the Press and Theater for Actors and Not Actors. And this, uh, Augusto Boal is, is uh, from Brazil and he's recognized as the most influential person in social theater, the social theater we see today nowadays. So in Latin America, there was this atmosphere of social movements, uh, revolution before the dictatorships. And Augusto Ball followed the steps of Paulo Freire and the pedagogy of the oppressed. Uh, Paulo Freire went to the communities to and help the community through literacy, but it was a different pedagogy. It was the pedagogy of realizing about the social problems. So you needed to read because you had to defend your rights. 
So I was to well have, I always like to tell this story because it's really funny. I was to well uh, went to these communities and prepared place to raise awareness. And one day he finished one, it was in a, I probably won't use the right vocabulary here, but it was a, a farm, but a very big farm where the people that work there don't own the farm. So the play was about revealing, uh, to be, to rebel about the oppression of the owners of the land. And they finished the play with guns saying, we're gonna do a revolution and kill them all. And so the community leaders say, okay, let's do it. Let's eat and then make the revolution. And they say, no, no, these are fake. These are not real guns. Oh, we do have real guns. Oh no, we cannot kill people. Ah, you cannot kill people, but we can do it. So they reflected and said, okay, the solutions have to come within the community. So they started making plays together with the people and the solutions were given by the spectators. And he started to call the people spectators because they were actors at the same time. Everybody can act except actors, he says, he used to say. So then one person said that the actors were an actor properly. So they say, okay, you come to the stage and act. And that's where the fourth wall was broken. So people could get in the play. So this is a very short story and it's just the beginning. There is a lot of information about forum theater and Augusto Wall used the same methodology to teach in Harvard, to teach to the national um, uh, theater of London and to teach housewives in Italy or um, people from the Andes mountains. So he used the same methodology. And all the developments that come afterwards have to do, or they they have that base. That's why it's so important. So I took this um, definition of social theater. Be I just look it up in internet, the reference is there, but it was better than the academic articles. So social theater, means to build communities around social justice and change through the use of theater. It is an umbrella term, including such concepts as theater for development, theater in conflict zones, theater in prisons, theater of the oppressed, applied theater in education, protest theater, theater for human rights, clown, socially engaged puppetry. You can add Teatro de la Escucha, that theater of hearing, of listening, could be. Uh, I can add uh, cultural pedagogical theater that is developed in Europe, and you will find many other, other names. So I always like to start with examples. I will tell you about this, and then when I talk about the, um, the previous things, uh, I'm going to make reference to this. So the play that people are pointing out all over, that's me sitting down. Uh, it's a play that was done at university to do research about job precariousness and job instability in the actual market. So we had professors, students from different courses, and it was a very interesting. We did a form theater and we had a big audience and they proposed solutions for those problems. And to that theater play presentation, a, a group of people with intellectual disability showed up and the professor was really stressed because he thought that the play was not uh, adapted enough, but they participated and could propose some uh, solutions that had to do with their daily lives. So it was really, really good for everybody. We learned a lot. The one that is at the bottom, 
like sitting around the table. I don't know if I, well, I guess you. And that uh, cultural pedagogical theater is used for training. And this was a training that it was done through six countries to train people that work with adults with learning disabilities and how, and autism and how to make uh, better interviews and how to prove the treatment. The one in the middle was a uh, training for social workers about social problems that people face. And, and the problems social workers have to get through this social justice of objective. It was really interesting. Uh, the one with the women like that is a picture that does not correspond to the actual um, uh, uh, group of people, but it's just a reminder uh, for me. And this is a PhD work done by a social worker who in India made a social theater group in a very, very small community. And that social theater group changed the whole town and they went into politics afterwards and they made a tour to other villages. So it was very touchy. I, the reference of the PhD is there, it's really interesting. The one on the right with the person in the wheelchair is from Portsmouth University where I spent a semester as an Erasmus student <laughs> many years ago and there, art students had to do applied theater and they act in they act in a play and they they build a play with people who really have needs and then the theater is accessible so they can go and act sometimes it differs every year sometimes they are part of the play sometimes they are they just act as informants sometimes they are the audience So, uh, one second. The next slide is, well, at the bottom, it's apartment complex. Uh, it's a play I saw in Brooklyn when I did my research stay, and it was in the city hall. They did social theater to help to create a law about housing. So they did the play with people who had problems with housing. It didn't have to be homeless people only. It was formed by a very heterogeneous group. And there were students, people who had a job but couldn't, the, the salary was not high enough. It was all gentrification. It was really interesting. And then after that, we have people were in groups with a legislator and they shared their solutions. The one with all the people with their hands raised, it was here in, Lava, in Madrid, in Lavapiés. Lavapiés is a neighborhood that is well known for the diversity in immigration, but immigrants are suffering of discrimination. The police is there all the time. And at the same time, uh, the, the neighborhood is undergoing a gentrification process. So the neighbors have to move. So it's really hard to build a community, but it's at the same time, it's a good spot for going out. So they did a play with neighbors and people could respond. They could come and act and ask for solution. It was huge. It wasn't the door of the National Theater, but social theater is generally in the street. Um, the other one is called Invisible Theater. You will see people at the top uh, like statues because they want to denounce something. Just It's called Invisible Theater because it's not supposed to be there. Then we had this place. The one that says Aquí Nunca Pasa Nada is about, uh, it's called Documentary Theater. And it's about um, a case of uh, human traffic and women prostitution. 
and they did this research, even judges participation in, in participated in the creation of the play. And at the top is the Las Latinas Son. It's a play made by Latin people that didn't have papers at the point in their lives. Now they might, they might not have. And it was about the prejudices that they face. And here at the top is called Bosa. Bosa is what immigrants say when they arrive to European land. And it's a play made by immigrants and people that work in the social intervention, social workers, and they made a play together. This was really successful. Some of them are doing Netflix movies now. The other one is about with teenagers. And they did the social theater play. They created it. They are uh, considered to be a social exclusion. The one in the bottom is a company in Seville. It's a sound of Spain. And it's homeless people who create their place. The company has many, many years. The one at the left is theater with refugees mostly to try to work on their drama and their itineraries without addressing the problem directly and trying to raise awareness in the hosting community. And the one with all the legs is my group of immigrants that they were, they used to be unaccompanied minors. And now in the, at that moment they were in a homeless shelter and we use theater in our group work just to, I don't know, make some games or uh, to create new things or to talk about things that they couldn't talk. Well, I'm rushing a little bit, but I'm fine with time. And social theater and social justice and social work. So what? Well, what are the things that can be useful for our practice, research, and education? So starting with the individual group and structural sphere is generally mixed and it's hard to put some concept in one place because it's related to the other, but that's how we organize information. So a theater games, through games and exercises, you get to know yourself and through knowing others. So you discover things of yourself because in the interaction to the other people, you get to know things about your oppressions or your problems uh, in community with others. And it's also good for skill development. So the, the personal well-being is enhanced, is shown in many studies. It's fun. Theater is fun and uh, does make you feel better. Being with other people makes you feel better. And also the emphasis on your own contribution and your personal experience and the importance of your personal knowledge to create something collective is something that is very valuable and it helps the self-esteem. Then uh, the, belong the feeling of belongingness that you feel when you're in a theater group is really important because, uh, well, I've been part of many groups in my life and I never experienced something similar than in a theater group. You get together with people who are very different to you and at the same time you share a space. Uh, it promotes active participation in different degrees because as a facilitator, you need to sense how everything is going. So it's a safe space to try new things. For example, the group of adolescents, uh, they were doing a critique of the educational system. And in one of the practice exercises, one of the, the student, the, one of the boys that were do, was acting like a student and the other boy was acting as a professor, he hit a professor. It was an actor actually. So when that happened, the whole group gave the feedback of how they felt about that, if that is possible. So it says is it, it is a safe space to try new things because it's, um, 
a symbolic space. So it's an encounter with the other and with other realities. It improves communication and not only oral communication, your body is there and you can communicate in different ways. So it stimulates creativity and it's always done through collaboration and never, never in position. And then the structural part, uh, I think is very important because the relationships that horizontal, even facilitators don't have these really bossy images. I mean, they facilitate the space, but the outcomes of the place are from the participant. And um, it's a place to try alternative so social action. It doesn't mean that everything will be done, but it, it helps you imagine that uh, other scenarios can be possible. Uh, all the exercises of the social theater, each branch has their own uh, method. They promote this critical consciousness through the interaction to others and the uh, sharing social problems. So my problem is not only personal, but it's structural. And it's really easy to see it there. Even when some people talk about problems of the other people, as, as they shared with other participants, it becomes a structural problem. And that's really hard to see if you don't experience it. Uh, the reflection about power and structure uh, is transversal to all the exercises. And uh, I don't know, there is a simple exercise. It's about chairs. You put chairs and you say, which chair has more power? and you make a status with chairs and everybody discuss about that. And we never talk about power that in that manner. And it does promote collective action, not always, but it, it does make people to feel that they, you, you need to act. And there are many examples that the collective action is, is really, uh, concrete and you can see it. And in other ones, I guess it's more in the daily life. And the most important is political. Uh, social theater has to do with politics and how to position, position yourself in life. So how to include social theater in practice and research? I guess I have five minutes, okay? <laughs> well, training, study, you can create place with service users and students. This semester, next semester, I'm going to teach ethics through social theater. Let's see how it goes. Uh, you can do, and it's also good for professional training, even if you don't practice it with the people you work with, uh, for personal awareness, to get to know that many problems are known to, to see the structural causes of problems and the different points of view. You can also work with the professional. Each one can contribute from different perspective. The social worker's view is very important in this elaboration of social problems. And you can also help people afterwards. And you can use some activities a little bit. I use it in the class, like everybody get up. And I use it with many groups. It uh, depends on the time and you got to feel if the group is ready or not. And you can also get connected with groups and take service users or the people you work with to see social theater plays. And I took teenagers to see some social theater plays and the conversations that derive for that are really important. It triggers many questions. And critiques, it's hard to handle emotional exploitation. Like, are we having that space for, because people cry and laugh and feel emotions. So is it a safe space? What's next? If I open, we in Spanish, we say we open a melon and then what we do with that. So sometimes it's really hard to see what you do with that, especially when you are working with people who, are in vulnerable places. But at the same time, they give you 
some it gives them some uh, tools to approach that so so does it necessarily derive in social action and transformation can it be enough i always ask myself that but utopias for walking galiano says and then also is everybody ready not all people can be in that position and not all people might feel it's the right place for them. And what about aesthetics? Aesthetics, aesthetics is something important, but it's not the most important part. What if we do really bad quality plays and they're not even appealing for people? And then I give you a lot of information to read more. And here are more information about companies. And there is an example of foreign theater that is really well explained. There are websites about theater of the press in New York. There is another website of social theater for change with many examples and resources. A TEDx about foreign theater. And then I finish with this. Uh, it's a Galeano, it's a writer from Uruguay that says, somos lo que hacemos para cambiar lo que somos. Uh, it is, we are what we do to change what we are. And it's a community mural. So, muchas gracias. And I hope I did okay with the time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Duca. I mean, this was such an amazing presentation. I, I, um, I love the review press. I use it in my um, in my uh, racial justice class. So I, I'm so interested to sort of learn more, and I can't wait to hear what some of our reflectors have to say, and um, you know, some questions from our group here. Amazing. So let, that is a nice segue for me to introduce our first reflector, and that is Sada um, Keith. Sada is a Syrian American second year clinical student here at BU School of Social Work. They grew up in Louisiana and attended Tulane University for undergraduate, where they studied political science and gender studies. And they then lived in San Diego before coming to Boston to pursue their masters. They are deeply passionate about social justice and radical liberation for all marginalized groups and hope to pursue clinical and macro work in line with these passions. On a less serious note, they have a, an adorable orange cat, which we did see beforehand. I can attest to how adorable the cat is, named Taz. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Sara. Um, thank you so much for your presentation, Linda. It was it was great. And um, I love theater, so... Um, I was excited to see it. Uh, I and all of my friends in high school were like theater people. So it's been a big influence on me. Um, and your presentation was making me think about how social theater can really like humanize different political issues and social issues. Um, and I think it's like, a, it can be a really excellent way to put um, what can seem to be like complex social justice theories into um, a story that's easier to grasp or digest for, you know, like the average person. Um, so I think that's really important. And um, it also made me think about how, um, you know, movies, TV, theater, just all kinds of entertainment um, is used to shape um, social and political narratives and how impactful that is, you know, like people often, I think, dismiss the influence and impact of art and how important it is. Um, to our culture and our world but um, you know I think you know those type of people they're really not seeing how impactful like um, art is especially like theater and movies and tv um, on our like social consciousness and imagination um, and uh, I also was thinking about how social theater like participating in it and, and even watching it can be um, a great therapeutic intervention um, especially like if you're participating in the social theater, I think it can be a great emotional release, um, and can probably be very empowering, especially if, you know, you're participating in social theater that tells a story about, you know, your own struggle, um, as like a marginalized person, for example. Um, 
so yeah, those are just some of the thoughts that I had uh, during the presentation. And um, I think my question for you would be, what was the most impactful piece of social theater you've witnessed or have been a part of? Well, thank you very much for your reflection. Um, this simplification of complicated stuff, it's something that is really important for me as a researcher, because I think the message needs to get better. Um, talking about emotions and therapy, uh, I don't know if it was the most impactful experience, but something that really get into my heart. One day I was doing a training for social workers and we they were talking about the problems they see and they created a very short play, like one minute about the situation. And one of the groups made the family buy. I know it was a, it wasn't a play, it was just an image. So it was uh, two people arguing and one was really with a violent expression that almost about to hit I, the other person. And it was a family. I mean, one kid trying to separate them and what baby was crying in the image, he was crying in the corner. We, in, in theater, we see the image, we analyze it, we see what we see, if that's common for us, if that's usual, and blah, blah, blah. And when I said I'm freeze, uh, the social worker that was acting as a baby couldn't stop crying for real. And this was really touch for me. It was one of my first uh, trainings I facilitated and it was really hard to approach. I didn't know the people. Um, so I don't know, her friends went with her, talked to her, I talked to her. We changed the whole, uh, I changed the whole session into something more playful and um, more about stereotypes and all that stuff. And um, I say that this was really uh, important for that person because she, with her body, she could feel what the baby was feeling because of her past. And that's very important for a professional in the future. Thank you so much, Sada, for that great question and um, Linda for that very comprehensive, touching answer. I'd like to um, introduce our second reflector, Aleka Means is a proud BU Gulak alumni, class of 2015 and 2013, um, and a licensed independent clinical social worker operating a private practice in Brockton. She provides therapy, advocacy, workshops, and consultation, all rooted in her unwavering dedication to social work and positive change. Additionally, she teaches essential MSW courses at BU, focusing on ethics, racial justice, clinical practice, and mental health policy. Recently, she has ventured into podcasting, facilitating impactful discussions on vital topics. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Dawn. Um, and thank you, Linda, so much for this presentation. I really appreciated it because this is one of my first times hearing about um, social theater and how we can apply this to social work. So I'm really um, thankful that this present, I, I showed up tonight, I really am. And so some of the things that came up to in, in my, my thoughts as you were kind of going through the presentation, I thought about like this just social theater as being an old concept. And I thought about, hey, there's nothing new under the sun. But I also was, help it was really helpful to see how it's not a new concept, but it's not a new innovation, but it's also a way for people to tell their stories. And one key thing that stood out for me was that a lot of the solutions in these theater is coming from the community. So if there are social justice issues going on, those solutions are coming from the community in the theater um, modality. So I really appreciated seeing that. And I'd like to see more of that. Um, that really stood out to me. And I feel like 
we should be able to do more of this in social work. Um, and as part of the racial justice team, one of the big things that we like to focus on is changing narratives and, and bringing, up, bringing out more of those concealed stories. So I think this is an excellent opportunity for professionals um, to work with folks, whether it's community members and or other professionals to find ways to empower themselves. Because sometimes as social workers, we turn on the news or we're at work and we're trying to discuss complex issues with people and sometimes they don't understand. <laughs> so I think this is an excellent way to do that. And I'd like to learn more about how to do that. One thing that stood out to me as we were as you were going along was I thought about burnout. I thought about professional burnout. And as social workers, when you graduate, half your work is kind of paperwork, right? <laughs> and then half of our work is working with our, within our communities, whether it's individual levels, um, macro, meso, or um, micro levels. But we're, we're doing a lot of work. And a lot of us, we do our work with our, our, in our communities and we go home and we're still doing work. So, I was, so, so my question is this, how do you think or do you think um, theater and social work can help change or, um, well, I guess change the trajectory of professional burnout in social workers. Um, so I just wanted to kind of um, hear your thoughts about that. Can this be a tool used? Because I'm always thinking about tools that we can pull out of our toolbox to improve um, our life, but also uh, reshape um, our work as professional social workers. So do you think this can help with our professional burnout? And if so, how? Well, thank you very much for your reflection. And some one part of the theater is also legislative theater. Augusto Boal was a legislator many years in Rio and he made laws based on social theater. So and many of the solutions that the community brings have to do with organizing and doing formal things with the, with the institutions. And then about burnout. I think burnout is a structural problem. So uh, we, we need to be careful because when theater is only about the personal well-being and feeling okay with yourself, it, it, it's just about addressing the problem in an individual manner, but social theater would totally help to try to raise awareness about this common burnout we all have and how this paperwork is stressing out and preventing us to doing really a practice that is towards social justice. And this burnout have to do with, well, that's my opinion, with the struggles we have with the power dynamics and the things we cannot change. For example, I worked with adolescents who used to be an, under, uh, unaccompanied minors. In that time, now the law change and they have papers, but in that time they couldn't work. So they could stay in Spain, but couldn't work. And I felt really stressed out because all their problems were because they couldn't work. So as soon as they got the papers, most of them are perfect. I'm still in contact with them. So even though you discuss this, uh, but I don't know, you, you can start a movement. Some of them uh, became an form an association. So social workers can do that as well. Um, probably get together and try to fight, fight for better work conditions. I think it would totally help. And, and Linda, thank you for that. I just want to say real quick, I know I'm out of time, but I, I also think like the, with burnout, I know some things are kind of more personal sometimes, but sometimes there's so many complex issues that societal issues that we're dealing with in, in the realm of social work and in the world that it, it becomes challenging for us as professionals. And we want to kind of like, sometimes we feel like there's not much we can do sometimes, right? And I think I was just thinking like the theater can be helpful in kind of getting those stories out that we're seeing, those challenges that we're having as social workers, um, fighting the system, just like our clients are. Um, I, I just thought of it in that context, not more the personal part, but more so that. Yeah. So I just wanted to kind of mention that and I'll, I'll leave it alone. Thank yeah, you so it, it actually works when it's done. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Hi, 
Yeah, I really appreciate like a, you raising that because it's like a kind of recursive process where like if you're acting in the world, right, and trying to change things, you, you feel differently. When you feel differently, you have energy to sort of act to change things. And I appreciated that frame so much. Um, let me move and introduce our final reflector. Um, and again, encouraging people to put any questions in the chat. Um, our final reflector is my wonderful colleague, um, Donna McLaughlin, who is a clinical associate professor at Boston University School of Social Work, where she coordinates the social work practice with group sequence and teaches group dynamics and psychodynamic practice. She presents on social work group practice, supervision, mentoring locally and internationally, and is a longtime member of the International Association for social work with groups and serves on the International Board of Directors. Everyone, it's wonderful to be here. Um, and I wanna, Linda, thank you so, so much. I, it, was, it was a fabulous presentation. And I, I wanna bring you into all my classes, which I guess I might be able to do, given that we're going to have a link to this <laughs> um, presentation. But, and thanks to the other reflectors, really made me think a lot. There's so many, so many directions that one can go in to, as we as we think about um, your talk and social theater. And I'm going to just comment from my perspective as a group worker um, and really how I think about you know, what your talk made me remember, made me think about was that that place that social theater can be, as you mentioned right in the very beginning, around collective well-being, right? And that moving from the individual to the collective well-being and, and how critical that is to make real change. And I think that group work, as we know, sort of spans that spectrum from the macro work all the way down to the individual work. But what it does is it really brings people together into a place of um, collectiveness, into a place of uh, less isolation, a feeling of belongingness. And that being able to do that through the modality of theater can be so incredibly healing. And when we think about trauma, trauma in the world, trauma today, you know, as, it, as it's taking place, that being able to come together and embody, like physically being able to do something with our bodies, even if it's nonverbal, um, together in theater can really help move um, the healing process for people, both those that are participating in it, but also those witnessing it. And I think that um, it's a modality that, you know, I learned about long, long, long time ago from people like Trudy Duffy and psychodrama and all of the exercises one can do with sculpting and those kinds of things. And I think that I think about my work with um, teenage young moms who were homeless and having them be in groups that were really doing theater groups and how transformative that could be for them. And then the next level that they were able to take it to that was really about social action going to city hall, fighting for various rights, you know, in, in their community for them as young moms. And I just want, I just, it's celebratory to me um, to think that we have modality that can be, um, can tell the story of very painful occurrences and times while at the same time bringing sometimes positive outcome and um, the healing that goes along with that. So I thank you for raising it and lifting it up. And um, I look forward to hearing more about it at, at uh, our, any shared symposium we might be at in the future. <laughs> um, but I guess the question I have for you is when you think about our current state of, you know, when I think about theater, I think about how it's so adaptable and it's so mm, uh, globally, you know, you can really, it can be used across cultures in a way that often academic and scholarly kind of pieces 
can't translate. Um, and I wonder how you might think about sort of lifting it up in, in, in bringing it into the social work academy, you know, into the social work learning, teaching. But, um, you know, I like to use it very much in the classroom. But I would say that that isn't a common occurrence across our colleagues, across our, you know, and I think that that could be really supported to be more and recognized as more legitimate than it is. And I'm curious if you have any thoughts about that. Yeah, I always ask the same questions. How to include all these without uh, being seen about the hippie, you know, and I live in the mountains and all that stuff. <laughs> But uh, Malekov, a person we know, yep. <laughs> uh, is an author that says mm -hmm. how you explain that you full of glitter sitting in the floor, mm -hmm. you know, and he talks about group work in general, but sometimes it's really hard to explain. And I always tell my students in the group work class that I teach that the best way to explain is to get to know more theory and to be to have your 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 theoretical background really strong so when you are in a one-to-one -one interview with a person you don't have to explain that much but when you are working with groups you have to explain a lot more and when you are doing theater in academy setting or in in, a, in an agency, you need to explain a lot. If people are screaming, they will come to tell you to hash. And it's really hard to explain. And I always explain it with theory. And this year I wanted to do a, a foreign theater play for my class. I will give the theory and then during the practice. And I was looking at information and I saw that the person, Sarah Banks is an author from England that uh, writes about, she's very famous, writes about ethics, had made this in her course in the UK, so I can do it as well. So I will try to do it. And I guess you need to take a um, risk. And the only time, the only manner to change things is by doing them. And uh, it might not work. Well, who says that my original ethical class was really working? So uh, I guess it's trying and try to uh, be really prepared for criticism. And that criticism might, might not even be face to face. And that's the worst part because when the criticism is face to face, you can answer. But I guess people see the results. Sometimes you can, there are many examples in the material I have that people take tests before and after the intervention to try to see if there is some change about social awareness, about the well-being. So there are scales that you can find that can help you because people like numbers and all that stuff. So I guess to get more into the academy. I have a chapter that now I feel it's a little bit outdated uh, about social theater. And in Madrid, we will do a group work. The next uh, group work symposium will be in Madrid. Uh, we will have some theater presentations. You are inviting the flyers about to come out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Donna. I'm wondering if that's an invitation for everybody to buy a Madrid, right? To go to Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. Um, we have time for a couple of questions. I'm gonna read the first one. Someone says, um, my concerns with engaging individual in vulnerable populations is their perspective or their sense of safety. I once completed a photo project with, a home with homeless youth it took time to make the youth feel comfortable and safe to show the, their photos to the public. Have there been times you have decided not to complete a project due to safety concerns for the participants? Well, yeah, in one, it's not, I'm not going to talk about the project I've been, but I think uh, this project will illustrate 
in my comp I used to be part of a company in theater, but then I moved. And it's called uh, the company is called Theater Without Papers, Teatro Sin Papeles. So it's people who were not legally in the country. So all the plays, uh, people were really scared that the police would come and take it, the, the participants. So for uh, being actors there, it was a real challenge and a real uh, threat to the people that were acting and to the audience because half of the audience didn't have papers. But at the same time, it was a safe space for them to express themselves because it was a safe place that people, uh, in generally when you go and see social theater, uh, most of the people are really in respecting the, the show. And there is generally a joker in, in social theater or a person that moderates. And that person will be mostly in charge of this safety. But yes, it's risky because, uh, I don't know, sometimes the play could could not start because one person was held by the police outside. And the police knew that in this place, many immigrants without papers came. So I don't know, the professors had to go and talk to the police. And, so uh, it is a, a safety is an issue, but inside the walls of the theater and in the street, even if you're acting, uh, people feel empowered by the others. Uh, nobody empowers anybody and nobody gets empowered by itself. So it's generally in the relation with the other that they feel safe to act and if they don't don't worry other person can do it and I love, you, your voice will be there i love that frame about safety and solidarity it's beautiful it's, it's beautiful um so and the next question is how would you encourage social workers who might say oh i don't do theater i don't know how i would incorporate this practice realistically well, uh, it's really hard to put your body in things, to move yourself, to even when you are a teacher, you're generally at the back, at the, at the front of the class. And when you are in your office, you are behind the desk, uh, putting like a shield between you and people. Uh, I would say that first, if they really want to get into this, it's not for everybody. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I look like a, a preacher from a church I'm trying to make everybody to do theater, but I know it's not for everybody. And maybe you're okay with writing and it's fine. And, or maybe you don't like art and it's okay. But uh, if you are really interesting, but you have some, Augusto Val we say, you have some police in your head that tell you not to do that, not to do this. And first go as an spectator. One day I took a professor from Colombia to a forum theater and she said, no, I'm really afraid that I'm not going to be able to. Uh, uh, no, don't worry. You don't have to go and act. You just can go and watch. Two minutes after she was acting at the front because she couldn't stand how the actor reacted to that issue. So she was acting two minutes afterwards. So first to watch and to see, and then try to have one small training. There are trainings that are four hours and that's all. And then little by little, try to incorporate. You might not incorporate at all, but it really will help you to raise awareness about the oppressions you face as well. Excellent, yeah, no, I think that everyone can dip their toe in and see how it goes. The last question um, is, and I'm, I'm just wondering about the context, um, given that social theater emphasizes creativity and imagining, 
what could be possible. What do you see as the overlaps with abolitionist aims? How do you work with abolitionists? So are you familiar with that term, Linda? And I can kind of contextualize it a little bit. Yeah, it's about abortion or? No, it's, no. it's not, oh, it's not okay. about abortion. <laughs> it's a different term. Um, it's, it's about, Here is the two brands of feminism. Um, Abolitionist of prostitution and? No. no. <laughs> No, um, abolition is a movement. Um, it's it's sort of a movement. It's um, that's based in sort of liberation, and it specifically began around jails and incarcerations. But and it, and it refers to different kinds of systems that we call carceral. So that things like the child protection system and you know the the welfare system and things like that. Uh, so when we talk about abolition, we're talking about movements to create liberation practices. So I don't know if that's helpful. Kind of Foucault's point of view, no? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah well, I mean, it's just, yeah, a, a society with, you know, that uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a, you know, it's not a, uh, it's a movement that focuses on liberation. It's not really connected to a specific political group, like it would, probably would be in Spain or something, but it focuses on liberation from uh, systems that are of oppression. Okay. So social theater is all about that, but the solutions that people offer generally have to do with something that is possible. Magical solutions cannot are something forbidden in social theater. You cannot come up with a magic wand and tell the owner of the big company to be a good person and make the company a cooperative. So uh, it has to do with this. It's all about fighting oppression and getting out of these systems. But people know that they face limitations and discussing those limitations and the possibilities you have uh, are also very is also very important for these people because sometimes okay i don't know if i'm going to say this right uh, people want to have a hegemonic trajectory in their lives <laughs> right and if you come with revolution ideas uh, it might not be their choices. Their solutions might be different. And the common solutions they find for those problems in in that space might be a different one. So uh, I, I think it, it does work towards that idea. And there are groups that are really political and they're already positioned from that point of view and they really try to fight the system. Yeah. And I guess in a way, all social theater, it's a way of fighting the system. Yeah. Yeah. But we are social workers, so we are part of that system. And that's a good reflection to make. Excellent, I so appreciate that sort of dialectic there. Um, wow, such wonderful sort of thoughts. I want to thank everybody. I know there are more questions in the chat. Unfortunately, we are out of time. And remember that Linda, it's midnight there. So we have to get her off the Zoom. Um, but we want to thank everybody for coming. Our amazing, amazing speaker, Dr. Linda Duca. Our insightful reflector, Sarah Amke, Aleka Means, Donna McLaughlin. And finally, our amazing behind the scenes research assistant and tech support for all of our EI events, Megan Nisa and Julia D'Angelo. One more reminder that if you're getting CEUs, you must complete the form, the link that Julia just put into the chat. So hopefully you'll be able to see the link that's in the chat. You just click on that and you complete that form. It takes, don't email us, tomorrow morning for the certificate. It takes a couple of days for us to download, check the, the Zoom, lo Zoom link with the names and things like that. So you'll get it sometime, probably within a week. We like to say in the movement that the path to justice is more like a marathon, not a sprint. 
So take good care of yourselves, everyone, because we need all of you to create the new world that we need and deserve. We hope to see you at our next ENI Speakers event on Thursday, December 14th at 5.30 p.m. when Dr. Greer Hamilton at the University of Michigan will be speaking about social work and reproductive oppression. Thank you, everyone. We will see you next month. Hasta luego. <laughs> Hasta luego. Muchas gracias. <laughs>